Good afternoon, everybody. So today we will continue where we ended up last time on Tuesday. We had just started discussing online business models, and that's where we will take off from today. So as we introduced it in the first uh, lecture, uh, the lecture where we discussed the basic concepts of uh, businesses. And one of these concepts was a business model. And we said a, a business model is the logic of the company. That's the, the approach through which the company creates delivers and captures value. So in the mes most basic sense, uh, one would say it is the me method of doing business by which a company can sustain itself. So a business model tells a story of how a business makes money. In very simple terms, one would say so. And these business models uh, differ from company to company. Uh, some of them are very simple, others are complex. And we saw during the uh, introductory lecture that the internet has created opportunities for different business models to be created. So today we see different business models are emerging, and most of these are based on the internet. So. In this class, we will look at different possibilities through which companies can generate uh, income. And I think this will be also very relevant for your assignment because based on today's class, you will be able to benchmark your business idea and see how uh, you can generate revenue, see which method you can use to generate uh, revenue. So there are numerous example, uh, examples of business models, as I have said, especially now when the internet provides opportunities for people to create businesses, we see that new models are emerging every day. And these are some of the, uh, I would say, dominant business models that we have today in the market. Uh, the first one is the brokerage model, where we see that companies create businesses where the core function provided is to bring together buyers and sellers. And this could be uh, businesses and consumers, or consumers and consumers, or businesses to businesses. And examples uh, of such business models uh, can be provided by companies such as uh, eBay, and also uh, PayPal, which is a transaction broker. And what PayPal does is to facilitate payment uh, of transaction performed between a, a buyer and a seller. So it's a third party company that provides a mechanism for payment to be done when people buy things or online. And also we have a, a business model uh, which is a form of demand collection system. And this is manifested by Priceline.com where consumers are provided with opportunity to name their price and this side identifies a supplier or a seller that will be willing to take that price. So this is also is uh, one of the uh, business models that uh, has emerged as a result of the opportunities that the internet has provided. And also we have an uh, advertising model which is quite popular and most of us are, we have experienced this and we have talked about this uh, quite a lot I would say. And in this case the publisher provide a space for other uh, people or other entities to, to advertise their products or their goods or services. And out of these uh, adverti uh, advertisements, the publisher is able to generate his uh, revenue. And this could take different forms. It could be uh, user registration sites uh, where you find that it's, uh, it's free of charge for a consumer to use the site. For instance, uh, uh, some uh, media sites such as New York Times or uh, The Economist where the services are 
free of charge, I would say, that in, in order to, 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 to read their content, it's uh, free, but you need to register yourself. And this uh, information that you provide to them is quite useful because they are able to track your behavior once you are visiting uh, their site. And they can use this for selling to other firms that are interested in that information. And also, you could have uh, classifieds where on this size uh, we normally find items uh, for either for sale or people that uh, want to buy certain items, they, they list uh, those uh, uh, items on the size. So such a size provides a space for people to list what they want to sell or what they want to buy and thereby providing opportunity for sellers and buyers uh, to meet. And also you have uh, portals, and this could be either vertical or horizontal. Horizontal provide a, a wide range of uh, uh, links to other sites. Typically, this constitutes of uh, search engines, such as uh, Google. But also you could have uh, vertical portals, which are provide links to specific uh, subjects. And also we have content targeting advertising, and, and this has been mostly pioneered by Google, whereby they match content of, of a particular site, and they're placing uh, adverts based on the relevance of the content on that particular site. So if you are visiting, say, uh, a blog with a specific uh, content, then what, does, what Google does is to place adverts that are relevant to that content. So in a way, this is uh, an opportunity for uh, target marketing. And also we have a, a market model, and this is uh, quite popular and very common. Most of us are, have experienced this either as buyers or some of you probably as sellers. So what happens with this is uh, a, a wholesaler or a, a retailer uh, provide their goods and services for, for sale. And the sale may be made based on list prices where each item is uh, named with a price and a consumer either has to take it or leave it, or in terms of auction, where people have opportunity to bid, as we discussed here uh, last time, uh, different mechanisms uh, w w through which uh, transactions are performed online. An example of this market model is uh, Amazon, where a wide range of items are sold. Whether it's books, uh, today Amazon has pretty much uh, everything. And also Apple iTunes Music Store, this is also could, could be regarded as an example for a uh, market, item, uh, market model. So the basic idea with the market model is goods or services are provided for sale, and this is the main source of revenue for the site or for the company that owns the site. Another model that the internet uh, has provided an opportunity for is uh, manufacturer or direct mode. This is a form of business model where a company reaches its buyers directly and thereby compresses the dis distribution channel. We spoke about uh, this intermediation uh, last time where the internet has provided an opportunity for companies to eliminate middlemen or to eliminate intermediaries. So with this type of uh, business model, the manufacturer or the producer uh, of the product is able to sell directly uh, to its consumers. And uh, one example of this is uh, daily computers. So why do we bother about uh, be, uh, business models? Business models are very important, especially for startup uh, online business, because it provides you with the possibility of viewing your business. So through a business model generation, you will be able to assess the potential success of your uh, business. But also, even existing uh, companies, uh, they need a business model because through this, they will have an opportunity either to modify the business model that they, they have today or try to pursue new opportunities that the, the internet has uh, 
brought today in the business uh, world. There are many tools that are used uh, for generating a business model, but uh, Business Model Canvas is one of the very popular uh, tools that uh, is used to summarize the strategy for businesses in general. So in this class, we will use Business Model Canvas because today it appears this is a standard tool, I would say, that companies are, are using generating or in evaluating their uh, business models. The model was developed by Oswald and Pignar in 2010, and it was as pa a part of a co-creation project, uh, which involved uh, 470 practitioners from uh, 45 countries. Basically, the business model canvas has nine sections, and we will look at each one of uh, these in, in turn. So it highlights the entire uh, structure of your business and therefore providing you with an opportunity of seeing how sustainable you, your business uh, can be. So we will look at each one of these uh, items that are key to a, any business model. So we'll start looking at, the first one is the value proposition. We, we have talked about this uh, earlier before that this is the core for any business. And what value proposition is, is what kind of benefit are you going to provide to your uh, consumers? So this is the first and foremost aspect that you need to ask yourself whenever you're thinking about uh, creating a business, what value are you going to create to your consumers? The second uh, important aspect is customer segments. So you have this, uh, defined uh, the value that your business is going to create. The next question is, who is going to buy your products? So you need to identify the different uh, audiences uh, to whom your value proposition will appeal, that people that will be willing to pay you for the products that your business is uh, providing. The third one is customer relationships. So what kind of relationships are you going to build and uh, sustain with your uh, customers? So how are you going to save your customers? Are, are, are you going to use a self-service mode? Whether the, uh, the services will be automated? Whether you will use online communities? Or are you going to make more personal assistance? So it could be different forms of uh, customer service. And you need to understand that this has implication to the operational cost because the higher the level uh, of service, usually the higher is likely to be the cost of operation. So you, you need to think about uh, what kind of service are you going to provide and what level of service are you going to uh, provide. But we, we all know that this, these people really care about uh, service. And the quality of service makes a huge difference uh, among businesses. So it's one of the aspects that you need to think through very carefully because it's going to determine the success of your business. Consumers love service, so you need to think about it carefully. The fourth one is channels. As we spoke uh, in, in, the past, uh, in the couple of past lectures, that usually you will have to have distribution channel through which your, your consumers will obtain your products. So whether it's a good or service, there must be channels through which you will send your products. So you need to define these channels, whether you will sell your products directly to consumers or you will use intermediaries or uh, that is other firms that will uh, help you to get your products to, uh, other, uh, to the consumers. So you need to identify these channels. And while identifying the, the, the distribution channels, you also need to weigh their relative importance and how is it going to affect uh, the experience of your, your users or your consumers. And this is very closely related to the fifth aspect, which is key partners. And these are the different uh, other businesses that you are going to cooperate with in you 
in the process of creating value. So say uh, in an online environment, we, you have firms that are already uh, established, say influencers, people that have, uh, uh, say, have established uh, blogs or other sites, and how they have been able to attract huge volume of, of audiences. Probably, depending on the nature of your business, those are the kind of uh, firms that you would like to collaborate with. Because usually by taking advantage of uh, established uh, uh, firms' resources that, that they have, you can be able to strengthen your value cr creation. So you need to identify different key partners that are relevant for your business. Another aspect that you, you need to consider are the key activities. Uh, we said earlier uh, in the first lecture that in order to create goods or services, you need to do some activities. So you need to identify what kind of activities that your business will be involved with. So this could be a, a wide range of uh, activities, whether it's uh, uh, manufacturing, whether it's uh, promotion, a couple of activities. It, it differs from business to business, but you need to identify which core activities that are necessary for your business to create value. <coughs> Close it related to key activities are resources. We, we talked about this earlier also, that resources, the different inputs that are introduced into the production process in order to create goods or services. So you are going to provide a service or a good. Now you need to think about what resources do you need in order to be able to create these products? And where do you obtain these resources? So this is a, a, an important aspect because uh, it has implication not only to the uh, quality of the, 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 the goods that uh, you are, goods or services that you are, you are going to, uh, to, to produce, but also it has implication to the sustainability of the entire uh, business. So you need to identify resources that you are going to use and how are you going to obtain this. And as we will see, another aspect is cost structure. Any business involves uh, operational costs as well as costs that are related to the resources. So in order to start a business, you will require resources, you will do some activities, and these things don't come for free. You need to pay for them. So you need to establish the costs that are needed for, you, for your business to take off. And pretty much this can be developed based on the key resources and key activities. Ba based on the activities and key resources, you, you can be able to estimate the, the, the costs that are likely to be incurred for your, for your business. So and in most cases, when a new business starts, it's unlikely that you will start generating revenue overnight. It, it, it might take some time before you start making money. So you need to, uh, to, uh, to calculate all the costs that are necessary for you to sustain your business before you can start generating revenues and profit. The last one is the revenue stream. So we have talked about uh, value proposition, we have talked about segments, you, you now know uh, how you are going to distribute your products, you know which activities are necessary for you to create value, which resources, which key partners, and the cost structure of the business. The last one, uh, probably this is the most important aspect, is the revenue streams. In the end, every business desires to create revenue. So you need to identify an appropriate method through which you can generate uh, revenue. And uh, we will discuss uh, in a couple of seconds uh, examples of uh, different methods through which uh, companies can generate revenue. But you need to identify beforehand how your business will generate uh, revenue. So this is an example uh, of a business uh, model canvas. So this is a, a, a business that has highlighted different uh, aspects of the uh, business model canvas, uh, starting with 
a value proposition. Uh, they intend to help businesses grow value by improving cross-channel marketing communications using recommendations from e-books, courses, and software. And also, they intend to support individual learning and development. And the last one is deliver specific consulting or training advice or mentoring. So this is how this business uh, will uh, attract people to buy their services. Now, these are the, the core value that they intend to provide to, to consumers. And then they have customer segments. So who will be willing to pay for these services? So they believe that this will, will be businesses that want to improve their returns from marketing. And what kind of relationships are, are they intending to create? So the first and foremost, they intend to provide self-service that people will be able to save themselves. And I think maybe this is uh, based on the nature of the uh, services they provide. They find it is convenient for uh, businesses to serve themselves. And also, they will dedicate themselves to mentoring and consulting. And this is uh, relatively much more personal, as well as co-creation, where people will be provided uh, with an opportunity to provide inputs to the uh, value creation process. And also, they, they identify channels uh, through which they will be able to provide their services. And uh, here they have uh, five channels, uh, search marketing, email marketing, partner arrangements, social media marketing, paid advertising. So th these channels differ from uh, company to company, depending on the nature uh, of the business or depending on the nature of the value that you are creating or you are proposing to your consumers. So in case uh, your business involves uh, sale of tangible goods, in the end you will also need to have some physical process uh, that will uh, facilitate the transfer of goods from your business to the consumer. So the nature of channel here will change depending on the type of uh, good or service that you provide. They also identify key partners that they believe will be relevant for their business, and that include uh, experts uh, uh, that is specialists in different sectors, marketing agents and uh, freelancers, online publishers, publishing or conference organizers, industry influencers and bloggers, and trade organizations. So. Likewise, in this one too, it depends on what type of uh, business you are doing and which uh, or uh, who may be relevant as your partner in the cause of value creation. They also identify key activities for their business, and this in includes content creation, experience creation, service promotion, sales maximization, and also they identify key resources content creation, development, marketing, and all of these create the basis for cost structure. So they identify uh, the different uh, items that will form as the, the, the base of their cost structure. And finally, they identify the revenue stream, that how their business will create, will generate uh, value. And this is through annual subscription to companies and individuals individual product purchase, ad revenue, consulting and training, and license content revenue. We, we will also go through uh, various uh, revenue methods that companies can use. And this is uh, what we call online publisher and inter intermediate revenue model. So we, I'm going to provide examples of uh, different methods through which online publishers can use to generate uh, revenue for their businesses. The first one is cost per thousand impressions. So we saw earlier before one of the uh, business models is uh, an advertising uh, model where a business generates uh, revenue by providing space for advertisement. And one of the ways that uh, uh, an online publisher can generate uh, revenue is through cost per thousand impressions. So th this typically, I would say, is a method through which uh, the revenue is generated. So 
it can be it's, you can regard it as a cost to the advertiser but uh, it's a revenue to the uh, to the publisher or to the site that provides space for advertisement and what cost per thousand impression means it, it means that whenever uh, an ad is uh, viewed or saved uh, a thousand times the publisher receives a specific amount of uh, money and we will talk about how this is determined a, bit, uh, a little bit later but usually there is an agreement between the publisher and the site on, on how much they will pay them for each uh, a thousand views so for instance in this case if the agreement is uh, fifteen uh, dollars and this site uh, fifteen dollars for per thousand views and you happen to receive 3,000 page views, then it means you get $45,000. Do you understand how we, we get this? So the, the method is cost per 1,000. Uh, M stands for mil. So for each 1,000 times the, the ad is viewed, in this case, the publisher receives fifteen uh, dollars, and we we say that uh, this site has received three uh, thousand views, which means if we divide this by a thousand and multiply it by fee, we get this one. Is that right? 3,000 divided by 1,000, 3, 3 times 15, 45. Another approach is cost per click. So this is slightly different from the previous one. As you, you, you can see, all that you need in this case to generate revenue is the amount of traffic. That the more traffic you can attract, the more re revenue you generate. The second one is relatively based on performance. That is, uh, the revenue is earned for each click that is made on the, on the ad. We will see some examples uh, 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 a, a bit later. So in this case, it's not enough just to attract uh, traffic, but also it is important that, that your visitors click on the ads that are placed on your site. And this one is uh, even stricter compared to the previous one. Affiliate revenue. This is uh, commission-based uh, revenue, where your revenue is determined by the amount of sales that are made on the uh, third part. So you are providing a, a space for advertisement or a link to the third part uh, uh, site, and the only uh, moment you can generate uh, revenue is when people actually buy. Not only that they, they visit the other site, but also when they buy the, the products. And your revenue is based on the percentage of uh, commission that you have agreed. We, we will uh, do some calculations uh, a, a little bit uh, later. So you can see that th this is much more, uh, I would say this, this is stricter compared to the previous ones and uh, it's pretty much in favor of the advertisers because you don't have to to pay for the ad unless someone has purchased the the product and then another source of revenue could be sponsorship or of site section so in this case whether you have a, a blog or any site and a company is interested in uh, providing special uh, sponsorship to your blog. So you agreed on the fixed amount, uh, usually it could be per year or six months, depending on the negotiation that the two of you have. And they provide that fixed amount of uh, money for you to uh, advertise their, their business, to promote their uh, business. I think uh, we, we know a couple of uh, blogs, uh, not only in, in Norway, but also in other countries that uh, receive uh, some sort of sponsorship. And you will see them that they are quite dedicated to promoting the, uh, the sponsor. But of course, 
this is if you are the publisher it's quite tricky because sometimes you, you will have to balance between the values of your blog and what kind of sponsorship that you accept so for instance if your blog is about healthy lifestyle then probably you want to avoid uh, accepting sponsorship from companies that are perceived as providing products that are not that healthy so it's quite tricky and it might be difficult to attract a sponsorship but it's one of the methods that uh, actually people use to generate uh, revenue. Another method through which uh, uh, online publishers can generate uh, revenue is the transactional revenue. So in this case, revenue is generated when uh, a publisher is able to facilitate uh, a transaction. So a popular example of this would be eBay, but also uh, sites such as Fin.n or does uh, do the same. Another method is through subscription. So in this case, you require your visitors to subscribe to, to your uh, site and they have to pay for, for services. And so one, one example of this is uh, Netflix. So you, you have a, a monthly sub subscription uh, for the, those people that uh, subscribe to Netflix. Previously, some, I think before last year, it was 79 uh, kroner. And now it's uh, raised to 81 or 89. 89. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember I subscribed uh, with the 79 and I got a mail that you, those who were from before, you can continue with 79. So the new one is 89, right? So this is an example that you provide a service and require uh, people that use your services to subscribe and they pay subscription fee for a particular period of time. Could be monthly, week, whatever, depending on what is convenient to, to your business. And another approach is pay-per-view access to documents. So we also uh, know some companies where they provide services uh, that could be uh, documents, you got videos or music clips where you have to pay each time you access uh, the service. So it's a bit different from subscription because with subscription you, can, you use the service as much as you want uh, for the period for which you have paid but in this case it's a kind of uh, a unit cell that each time you use the service uh, you have to pay for it and another one is subscriber data access for email marketing so in this case usually the uh, online site will uh, re ask their visitors that if they are willing their their data or information uh, uh, to be distributed to third parties. So uh, I, I think uh, you have experienced this from time to time that you visit a site or so whether you buy a, a service could be to an airline and at, at the end of the transaction they ask you whether they could share your information to a third party. And to them this is a source of revenue because this information is very valuable. By tracking your behavior on their site they create your profile which other companies might be interested in. So when they sell that information, it's uh, a source of revenue uh, to their business. So you might consider whether this source of revenue is appropriate to, to your business. Now, we have talked about uh, revenue sources for online publishers and different methods that uh, publishers can use to, to generate e uh, revenue. There are about five key factors or variables that determine eventually the amount of revenue that your business will develop, that will, will uh, generate. And these are number and size of ad units, capacity uh, to sell the advertising, fee levels negotiated for different advertising models, traffic volumes, and visitor engagement. So uh, uh, we will go through each one of these. So the first one is the number and size of ad units. So assuming that you are an online publisher, 
And then what we say, if your revenue um, source is advertising, what you do is to provide a space for other companies to, to advertise their businesses. So how much you can generate partly depends on the number and sizes of ad uh, advertisement that you will place on your, on your site. But it, this is quite tricky because you need to strike a balance between uh, the number of ads and the ex user experience because usually users will visit your site uh, primarily for the content that you provide. So you need to strike a sort of balance between their user experience and the number of ads. If you have too many ads on the site, probably your visitor may not be very happy with that. But also, if you have too few ads, you will reduce your revenue. So you need to strike a balance that make sure that you, your user experience is enhanced, but also you have uh, enough ads uh, to present on the site. Most sources recommend that an average of two to three ads should be enough. If you are an online publisher, if you have those ads, then it should be okay. But if you have too many ads, it could be uh, quite unpleasant uh, to, to, to your uh, visitors. Another aspect to consider is the capacity to sell the ad. So an online publisher has a space which can be considered as a, an inventory because this is what you sell to, to the advertisers. So how much you, you can generate, it depends on the, 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 the space that you have, the space you have and how much inventory or how much of this space you have been able to sell. You, it's quite common to visit some sites and see that they're, they're asking, you know, you can advertise here or they are probably putting their own ads. So that's represent unsold inventory. That's, it's a space that they couldn't sell. So how much revenue you can generate depends on how much space you have been able to, to sell. Probably in this world, there is no any other company that knows how to place uh, ads than Google. So Google has some uh, advice on how you should place your, your, your ads uh, or how you should place ads on your, your, your site. And they say first and foremost, you need to consider your consumers. And there are a couple of questions that you need to ask your, yourself. Uh, the first question is, what is the user trying to accomplish by visiting uh, my site? That what kind of content people are interested in and when they visit to your site, what are they really looking for? So you need to, to know this so that you can create relevance between the ads and the content that you are providing. And what do they do when they are viewing a particular page? So you need to monitor the behavior of your, uh, your visitors. and where is their attention likely to be focused? So you need to think about uh, where are they likely to focus their attention. Now, in the next slide, I'll, I'll, I will show you uh, some of the best uh, places that you, you, you can consider on your site. And also, you need to think about how you can integrate us into the area without getting the user's way. So you need to bear in mind that the users come to your site primarily for the content. So you have to make sure that you don't create any sort of uh, obstruction or distraction to the, to the users. And also you have to ask yourself, how can I keep the page looking clean and cluttered and inviting? And this is pretty much what we are talking about, uh, the, the balance between the number of uh, ads you have on your site and your user experience. So there are People are giving advices uh, on how you should place uh, ads on your site. And uh, most sources that I, I visited agree that the space, if you consider this as your uh, website, then the portion of, of, of the, the, the page where just above the title of the content is regarded as the premium position to place the ad. And then the next base would be in between the content that when people have started, say, reading 
some text and somewhere in between you can place an ad and also the upper left corner is also regarded as uh, suitable these two are okay and this is the worst position to place your your eye what, what do you think about this does it resonate with you does it make any sense to you do you agree with this Uh, so uh, uh, at least this is what uh, they, they advise on how you should uh, place your your, your uh, ads and these positions are mostly based on the data that have been collected over time on user behaviors on websites that w which add uh, locations that have uh, much more impact And this is an, a, 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 an example of uh, a good uh, lo location of your, your ad. And Google says that uh, first and foremost, you need to show off your content. W we said earlier that your visitors vi uh, come to your site primarily for the content. So you need to make sure that this content is easily visible to your, to, to your uh, uh, visitors. And they have what they call uh, above the fold notion that your content has to be above the fold and what above the fold means is is the portion of the the page that someone can view without scrolling down whether they have a mobile phone or whether it's on a pc the, the that portion that they can view without scrolling down is what they call uh the above the fold so they say you need to place your content within that uh portion And this is an example of a bad position where all the content is below the fold that someone has to scroll down before they can see the main content for which they came to the site and all that they see in the first place is the ad and this is not good so the, the, there should be a balance between the, the ad and the, the, the content And another thing that you need to consider is that these days people use different devices. So when you're creating your site, you need to think about uh, uh, different devices that people use. And uh, this is because the, the different uh, placement of, of content on, the, on your site may appear differently depending on the device someone is using. And uh, Google uh, provided a, a tool. If you go to this site, you can use it to check whether your, your site is uh, properly, uh, properly implemented or not. So this is an aspect that you need to think about. Another factor that determines revenue is the fee levels that you can negotiate, as I said earlier, that how much you, you can uh, generate from your advertising depends on your bargaining power and the market conditions in terms of uh, demand and supply as i said earlier you could have a cpa value of 15 dollars but it could be even lower de depending on your de negotiation power and this partly depends on the say factors such as popularity of your 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 site uh, it, in norway they have a, um, a site where blogs are ranked from time to time that you can see which blogs are more popular at a particular period of time and then such factors can determine how much someone has bargaining power because if you are, you are able to attract huge traffic to your site in most cases you will have some bargaining power when it comes to determining how much advertisers to uh, should pay you because you absolutely your site will appear attractive to most advertisers because what advertisers are looking for is the exposure uh, to the public and if you have a site that attracts huge traffic it means that you will appear attractive to advertisers and that gives you uh, an upper end when it comes to bargaining uh, how much fee you can you, you can charge 
another factor is traffic volume that how much and this is quite uh, intuitive that how much you can make depends uh, on how much traffic you attract to your site the more traffic you attract the higher the chance that you can uh, generate more revenue and another factor is visitor engagement how much time visitors spend on your site and so for which, how many pages they visit and how long do they stay on your site because that determines uh, the, amount, the amount of exposure that the ads or advertisers will have on your, your, your site. So this is intertwined to the uh, amount of revenue that you can generate. So it's uh, 3 o'clock, we take a break and we will continue with uh, some e examples of calculations on revenue generation.